Ed here from Solid Quest. Welcome back again. Today I'm here to talk to you about Viticulture Essential Edition. I hope you've enjoyed the playthrough for this game. Uh, and I'm very, very sorry for the, that little bit of technical issue that uh, uh, went on. I was kind of bummed as well when I was editing everything and I realized the last part was missing. I'm really not sure if I deleted it by accident or whatever what happened. Uh, but yeah, I hopefully I was able to make up for it, and hopefully it, it didn't. Um, you didn't lose track of anything, and everything was fine. And uh, yeah, I hope I was able to save the playthrough, and that you've actually enjoyed it, just as just the same. Um, so yeah, apart from that, uh, well, I. I'm here to talk about video culture, not a playthrough, not a video. Uh, and yeah, what do I think of this? Uh, now, here's one that's going to be very, very hard to talk about. Uh, and that's because I'm really, um, there's so much good stuff in this game, but then there's bad stuff that I didn't really uh, enjoy that much. And you might be just going, well, how, how can you not love video culture? Uh, yeah, and I will try and explain uh, my issues with it the best I can. Um, so. I'm gonna go into the bad stuff first, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, one, first one. Uh, some aren't really bad stuff, it's just, I don't know, when you're playing, it doesn't feel that great. Um, yeah, and one of the things is the Automa. I like the Automa. No, uh, yeah, the, the Automa, it's not that the Automa is bad, it, it isn't, it's good. But I think, uh, you know, the Automa has these spaces for Tuscany, I don't have Tuscany. So, uh, I'm going to be honest, I never played with Tuscany, so I th it almost feels like I'm playing an incomplete thing, because the Othama, you know, has actions for uh, that, that specific uh, expansion, and it seems like I'm, I'm either missing out or I'm playing something incomplete, I'm not sure, but that's the feeling I have, okay? This is a feeling, I, I'm not sure if I'm really missing out on something or not, uh, but yeah, that's the feeling I get from this deck. And that feeling is kind of exasperated. Is is uh, if, let's say, you've, you've probably seen that in the playthrough. Um, let's say we're, we're at summer. We draw the cards for the Automa. And he's going to block, I don't know, play the Summer Visitor. That's it. I mean, you have, you, you have the whole board for, you, for yourself now. Uh, it's, it's almost like a, pr a playground uh, in the summer. So it's not like the Automa actually is doing anything to, pr to, to block you or to prevent you from winning. Uh, and he's leaving things a bit too, too open, if you know what I mean. Uh, and that gets even worse if you buy your winter card and he doesn't block anything, which I think it happened in the playthrough. Uh, so, I mean... I, I get it that he, he's not here to make it impossible to win, uh, but in certain terms, he makes it like he's not there. He's invisible. He's just, uh, I don't know, uh, he's not doing anything. And you have the whole board to do whatever you want to. Um, so I guess my gripe with this is that uh, some, terms, some terms he will block Everything, I mean, it's it's not balanced in that sense. And sometimes he will block a lot of stuff and others he won't block anything. So, uh, I mean, you can get a full game without him blocking stuff, another game with him blocking almost nothing. So the difficulty of the game itself is going to go re really sky high or really low, depending on uh, that luck factor. If you draw cards um, that have summer actions and you draw them in the winter, uh, or the opposite, okay? So that's a little bit of a gripe I have, but um, there are variants in the uh, there are variants in the rule book. Actually, let me let me take it out. Um, there there are variants, and the, I think they really um, they really help out in that matter because there's a variant here. Uh, you have you can adjust the difficulty, and I think I like the the hard difficulty. I, I honestly I think I'm just going to play at hard. Um, forward because you keep drawing Alzama cards and place workers until the Alzama has placed at least two workers in the current season okay place workers on all the spots listed on the extra cards but don't place on actions where there's already a worker um, okay so which means he is going to block you on two actions per season for sure okay and that I think might fix this a little bit because it will it will make it um, seem like yeah there's another player blocking me 
also playing on this part and that's going to give it a uh, give i don't know i think it's going to give me a, a much more sense that i'm playing against someone and that i have you know uh, my heart the the work cut out for me because i really have to push myself to make those points so yeah that variant can definitely um can definitely fix this little issue that i have with the automa which is the only issue um but apart from yeah having the, all those tuscany symbols and having the feeling that uh, I, am i missing something here am i playing something that it's not complete should i just play this with tuscany I don't have Tuscan yet, we will have a playthrough later on, uh, but I'm really, really eager to try this with, uh, with Tuscan. But yeah, carrying on, apart from this, um, what's my other gripe? I have two gripes, so this is, one, uh, this is the minor one, um, the bit about the Automa, it can, go, it can go really up or down, you can't really control unless you use that variant where you know there are going to, there's two spots that are going to be blocked and yeah you're going to have uh to sweat uh you know it's going to be blood tears and sweat and tears to get that wine and those victory points done but my biggest gripe is actually um the board it's not the well it's the number of actions on the boards i think the board is is a bit too small and uh i mean there there uh, which means there aren't that many actions which means, in, in result, there aren't that many paths to, vic to victory in this game. Uh, you have to uh, fill orders. That's your main, um, the main source of victory points in this game. So, which means you're going to uh, be put on this loop of harvesting fields, making wine tokens, filling orders. Uh, that's going to be like 60 to 70 percent of your game or at least if th that has been the 60 to 70 percent of my games I've played quite a few and uh, I've done this pretty much on all of them um, harvesting fields you know betting the, the victory points on filling orders because because that's the most efficient way that I see uh, to get your points here um, I, I don't know. I don't know how many played, games I played. I am yet to lose a game against the Automa. I, I've drawn. Uh, I had through two draws. The other games I, I won. I've played like more than ten for sure. Uh, and, I, and that's because of this loop. I, I've just been doing this. Uh, and then the, those missing victory points, I'll get them on the visitors. And yeah, that, that's there's a replayability and there's a lot of difference in the way you get those remaining victory points, the ones that don't come directly from filling orders. But still, I wish there was more, uh, more ways to get those victory points. Because it, the way it works right here, it's just filling orders and then, yeah, um, summer visitors or winter visitors, which is... I don't know, it feels a bit disappointing. Uh, maybe I was expecting much more and that's on me. Uh, I had such good, uh, such a big hype, you know, I was really hyped to play this game. Coming from Scythe, I mean, Scythe was, is amazing, is an amazing and one of my favorite games. And Viticulture, it's really, it's ranked, I mean, it's really a high up there on the board game geek rank. Um, and I think on the one player guild uh, annual awards it's one of the games that's always on top as well so i was thinking i mean this is going to be amazing amazing uh and although it was it is a good game it's not amazing for me but i think it's an amazing foundation that you can build upon and get a great game out of it and i think that uh or I'm hoping and hyping again uh, that Tuscany can fill in the gaps and make this really, really shine. Um, because at the moment it doesn't really uh, shine that much for me. Um, again, like I said, it's it's that loop that really bothers me. Uh, in the playthrough, I mean, you you probably had a good sense of it in the in the playthrough. When you're starting up, so you you need to start up and set up your vineyard. You have to plant your uh, grapes, and uh, yeah, you get you have to. <clears throat> excuse me you have to I, I usually I always do the same when I'm starting the game I usually try and sell one field I plant the grapes uh, I build a structure if I need to those irrigations or the trellis I'll, I'll come into this because that this is actually uh, something that bugs me as well um, I either build the trellis or the irrigation because I need them to 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 plant grapes or uh, and yeah and after I have all of that set up 
then it's winter uh, winter actions the rest of the game. I'm saving up for the winter always because I need to do, to do that loop, to harvest the field, to make the wine tokens, and then to fill the order. I have to make that loop. The game kind of, it, it keeps pushing me uh, to do that. I have no idea how would I get the points any other way if I don't fill at least, I want to say at least four uh, orders per game. Or maybe three might be enough if you get a lot of points from the other visitors. Now, most of my games, honestly, uh, the Automa has allowed me to do this loop. There was one game in particular, actually the last one I played, uh, that the Automa was blocking me a lot. And that was it was a really challenging game. I managed to, to draw, but it was really close. Um, and yeah, I had to use a lot of visitor cards. To get those points and honestly it was the game the the, the the game I had most fun because yeah it was really really challenging and I really had to think and make other ways to to get those victory points so that's what I think it's missing in, in this game it's it needs to, to get you some something else to do besides this loop of harvesting one field I'm gonna say it again uh, to really put it in there, uh, harvesting one field, making wine tokens and filling the order. That's the last time I'm saying these three things, I promise. Um, so yeah, that this is my that's my biggest gripe with viticulture. I mean, I know it's it's a game about making wine. So yeah, what else would you do if not making wine? Um, I get it, but I don't know. I don't know. Something else to do besides filling orders. I don't know. Maybe have a wine market. I don't know. Something else. Uh, and yeah, maybe Tuscany brings that, can, can bring that to the table and really elevate this to a superb uh, solo experience. Right now, in my view, it's not superb. It's really, it really isn't. Um, so another gripe that I have uh, with the game, again, this, this one is a small one as well, but since we're getting rid of the bad stuff right at the start, let's, let's get rid of it all, um, which is, the uh, the structures the buildings you can you can build um, now you have quite a few you have the trellis and the irrigation like I said you're probably going to build them because the grapes uh, you require them to be built in order to be planted so these two uh, I've I've uh, constructed them uh, built them a lot of times honestly it's uh, oh yeah and medium sellers and large sellers I've I've also built these because well you need them for the to to store the wines. Because, yeah, you need to make wine tokens and fill orders, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I did build these. Uh, but the other uh, buildings, the windmill, the cottage, there's the yoke and the tasting room, I have never built them. Honestly, because I feel they are suboptimal choices in the end. Uh, the windmill, when you plant a vine, you gain one victory point. It's a max of one victory point per year. This costs five, I mean... I'm already scraping for money. I'm not going to buy uh, to build this windmill. Maybe in competitive, I, I I can see myself. Yeah, in competitive, you are going to get blocked in in that loop, the, the loop of harvesting, blah blah blah. You are going to get blocked, so you will have to find other ways to to stack up victory points. So yeah, I can totally see myself building the windmill. Uh, I like the cottage, for example. The cottage cottage says. You draw um, an additional uh, summer visitor or winter visitor each fall. Okay, so instead of drawing one visitor card, you draw two. I really like the cottage, but it costs four, and I've never done it because I don't have. Uh, I usually don't have the spare money. I I prefer getting uh, workers, uh, or I prefer I don't know. I need to or I I need to build trellis and irrigations or medium sellers and large sellers. So I don't usually don't have this uh, this four uh, lira. For the cottage, although I like the building, but again, it's suboptimal. I've never built it. The yoke, uproot one vine or harvest one field. I've never built it. I've never built it. It's a good alternative if the automa keeps blocking the harvest one field action. But apart from that, I yeah, it goes along. It only costs two. It's true, but I've never built it. Uh, the tasting room costs six when you give a vineyard tour. If you have at least one vine, one wine. <laughs> In your cellar, gain one victory points, maximum of one per year. Again, yeah, this and windmill are alternatives to victory points, but still, it's one per year. So, uh, I mean, it's not it's not that much. Um, honestly, I, I think I'm going to do one test game uh, in the future. I'm just going to go, I'll, I'll build these two. 
and, tr and see if what happens in that game to be honest i should have tried to test this out earlier to be uh, to be honest because uh, yeah now now that i'm talking about it to you it got me cur curious um but i look at it and it seems so suboptimal that i've never gone um and and built them and i've been okay i've been okay i've won most of the times so uh, that means that yeah th this loop does work but it's it's a bit too repetitive and it's a bit too limiting on your options. I like when a game opens up and gives me, okay, you can get victory points if you do this, or if you do that, each one of them has pros and cons. It's up to you. But in here, I don't know. It's, it's the, guy, the game points me here, points me into this loop, uh, which in the end will have me fill orders. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, my gripe with, uh, with viticulture. Um, it's kind of the suboptimal, suboptimal buildings. And, uh, yeah, this loop that is too enforced into the game. Um, it's almost like, I mean, the game, the games I play, uh, they are different, but it, they seem a bit similar, uh, in the end, in the end game. Because I, I'm, yeah, it's like, uh, the playthrough. I think there was a turn where I did nothing in the summer and I just saved everything into the winter. On those last two to, two to three turns, I think I've used most or not all, all, but pretty much most of the workers on the winter because that's where you need to bet uh, to get the points. And that's a shame because, I mean, it really could use some other good options. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much the bad stuff. The good stuff is that... Well, the game is actually good. <laughs> it's one of the games that I've played the most uh, in my collection, you know, to be honest. Uh, I really had a, have a great time with it. And, and although I, I'm talking about repetitiveness and uh, this loophole forcing you to keep going the same way um, quite a few times, there's a lot of replayability in, in the game. I mean, um, in terms of setup, super replayable. The, uh, the Mamas and Papas. They are a great addition uh, in this essentialization. I mean, they really change how you are going to start your game. I mean, although in the end game, like I said, my issue is more with the end game. Uh, although in the end game, you're going to pretty much, yeah, those, those last turns are going to be winter all the way. Um, the start, where, when you start the game, it's going to be really, really fresh every single time because they, they really um, diversify. Let's say the, this mama and this papa. She will give you two uh, grape cards, one summer visitor. So you've got grapes. You're going to have to get some orders to fill. Uh, this one will give you a trellis or a two cash. Some others will give you a medium seller. Uh, and depending on the grapes, you might need a trellis or you might not need a trellis or ir irrigation. You might just have, you know, that very basic stuff that doesn't need any structures. So you will be able to save that money and maybe even, well, I don't know, get a tasting room. You can try it out. Uh, so, yeah, uh, uh, to be honest, I mean, the, the mamas and papas, they give you a lot of uh, replayability because the setup is going to be very different and you're, will, you will be pursuing different stuff uh, in the, in the, um, at the start of the game. You will either have to build a lot of structures or maybe you will want to draw quite a few grapes uh, or plant a few grapes. I mean, if you, get, uh, yeah, if you get a mama that gives you like two grapes, you're gonna plant them right away. You, you will want to do that and maybe you will start har harvesting much earlier um, than you would if, let's say, you get a mama that gives you, I don't know, like this one. She gives you two summer and one winter visitor. So yeah, that's going to change uh, your your initial uh, actions quite a bit. And again, there's a lot of visitors in. Uh, well, there's a lot of everything. To be honest, I mean, the grapes. There's I don't know how many cards in here. The rule book certainly states it. But actually, let me have a look. But there's there's more than there should be. To be honest, there's 32 vine cards. Oh, they call them vine. Sorry, there are vine cards, not grapes. Um, 42, that's really a lot. That's going to give you a lot of replayability. Uh, the summer uh, and winter visitors, again, they are totally, uh, they are very, very different. They will uh, allow you to pursue points in different ways. So um, they really add into the replayability value of the game itself. And the orders, again, they will lead you into different paths. 
um, well, I mean, in the end, you are, you know, you are harvesting one field, making wine tokens, but you will be making different wines and you will be pursuing different stuff if you get orders that are pretty much all blush wines or sparkling wines you are going to have to plant your stuff a bit differently because you might need uh, more wine tokens uh, different like smaller value wine tokens uh, and have a few of those then have um, uh, uh, I mean sorry having a lot of wine tokens with lower value uh, if you have blushes and sparklings because you need to combine a lot of different tokens if you don't, if you just have, you know, white and, um, and red to um, orders, then you're going to prefer having fewer wine tokens, but with higher values. So this is going to kind of dictate, uh, or it should dictate how you plant your, uh, your vines. Um, so yeah, this is going to, and how you are going to pursue the orders. So yeah, it adds to the replayability. For sure. I mean, uh, in terms of replayability, there's a lot of stuff here. It, things are going to be different, okay? You, it's not like you're going to see the same cards. No, you're not. And the way you're going to get those uh, remaining victory points, apart from the, the filling orders, is going to be very fresh from game to game, okay? No, I don't want you to get me wrong and, and think that I'm saying that the game is always the same. It is not. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be one of my most played games, okay? I just f wish that it was something more. I wish it was a bit more complex because that's a bit more up my alley. I like having a bit more complexity in my worker placement games and having a lot of options <coughs> to go for. Uh, but still, yeah, replayability is definitely uh, definitely there. Uh, and what else? I mean, apart from it, I mean, it, it, is, it is a worker placement. I think the Automa was very well integrated into the game. I love the mechanic of uh, having those transparent beads uh, in uh, in the um, in the, the the seven spots, and you place your rooster. You have a bead. It's a bonus that you will be able to use. I love that how how they implemented the automa uh, in this way. Uh, besides, I mean, they could have just I don't know made a deck and that's it. No, they went and did this, and it works superbly. I really love that that idea really well well crafted well thought of um so yeah, and in in those terms i mean the automa is amazing uh, and again if you think uh, i mean what i'm what the thing that i'm saying here about replayability or uh, the game feeling a bit the same because you're uh going into the loop again you have variants in this game and you have something that is called campaign play and this really makes makes it fun. Um, I mean, you have to try the campaign, campaign play. This is a series of uh, games that have challenges. Okay, so uh, this is going to change quite a bit of uh, how you play and uh, how you do things. Okay, so it's going to take you out of this loop that I've been talking about so much. Um, because, well, it is the play base game, so I have to talk about it. But this campaign play is going to really uh, take you out of this idea and just uh, let you experiment a little bit more with the game itself. Um, so, yeah, you, sh you should definitely, I mean, read the rules, play a few games, and then come into, uh, well, it's not the last page, but it's almost, and use the stuff that it's in here because it's all golden, to be honest. The cam campaign play is really, really, really fun. You should definitely do it, and uh, yeah, it's it's a game that uh, maybe if if this was all there was to it, I don't know. I would say, hey, try it. Uh, I don't know. You might get bored of it um, early on, but with with these rules, they they went to the trouble, you know, to give you these variants, these uh, different options, and they really make up for it. Um, yeah, it's definitely a game that you should uh, consider, to be honest. Um, what else can I talk about it? I mean, component-wise, I think that's the only thing I'm missing right here. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I can only say one word to you. It's Stonemaier. I mean, come on. It's going to be great. Uh, they went and did... I mean, you have so many... You look at your, um, your tokens, your uh, meeples, let's call them like this. There's a meeple for everything. I mean, your workers are the same, okay, but you have your Grande worker which I call this a tree in the unboxing. I'm very sorry, by the way. <laughs> I didn't mention it in the playthrough when I was reviewing the unboxing. 
Yeah, I said there was a tree in the game. It was a Grand Day Worker upside down. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> I kind of, I really laughed at that. Um, but yeah, uh, they customized everything. The, the sellers are different, the medium and, and uh, the large one. Um, the yoke, you have the yoke, you have your windmill, you have your trellis, you have your irrigation. Everything has a token. Every single building has a token. You have your cork for victory points, your bottle for um, residual payments. They didn't have to go to this trouble, but they did. And they did because they are amazing in component quality. Oh, you're a rooster. The rooster is, is lovely. I, I love this token. I mean, they really, um, they really push uh, into uh, component quality and in, into com quality all around. I mean, I, 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 there's not a bad thing to say about quality in this game. Well, uh, there's one bad thing to say, which is the, the Lyra. I really don't like the Lyra. I think, honestly... Well, they're pretty basic, but I think they should be a bit smaller. It's it's making them big and chunky. It kind of I don't know. I don't know. It's it's because they're big. I don't like it. I don't like the lira. But you can get metal uh, coins, metal lira, and those are beautiful and amazing. Um, so yeah, if you have uh, you know that financial um, possibility. Uh, and you want you like metal coins in games this is one game that you should definitely get because uh, the cardboard um, currency is kind of bad but well it's not bad but i don't like it visually gotta be honest it's, it's kind of a bit ugly for me uh but the metal bits i don't have them but i've saw i've seen them they are beautiful beautiful amazing upgrade um so yeah that's the components no that's not all the components I didn't talk about the player boards, but I mean, yeah, solid cardboard. The artwork is great. I love the, the board itself, that top-down view. It's really, really good. The one in the vineyard as well. I mean, I love it. And I love these transparent beads. How they did that, the, um, you know, it's so simple. You put the transparent bead on top of the number, but it kind of looks like a grape. And uh, it, it has that little zoom effect that help you helps you see the numbers. And when it's, uh, it's on the wine, it really looks like a glass of wine, I don't know. It's really well done, it's really well thought of. And it's super highly appreciated. I mean, in terms of component, it's yeah, super uh, thumbs up for, for Stonemaier for this. Uh, maybe just the Lyra. I don't know, in a, in a new edition, maybe make the Lyra a little bit more prettier. I don't know how, make it smaller, perhaps. But yeah, apart from that, it's an amazing quality game. Um, it's it's fairly cheap. Um, it's fairly cheap. So I guess uh, you're not. I mean, if you don't like it, uh, if you play it and I don't know, you don't like it. It's not like you're going to lose uh, a lot of it. But you're probably going to love it. Um, I can also uh, can also talk to you a little bit about uh, setup and tear down, which is a huge factor for me, and that's why it's also one of my most played games because the setup for this game is really really fast and uh, the teardown it's also very fast even the playtime itself they say 45 to 90 minutes yeah 45 maybe uh, maybe not even 45 maybe half an, I, I get games done in half an hour for this so uh, yeah it's if that's a factor for you yeah ha bear in mind that this is going to be really fast to set up really fast to tear down really f it's going to be fast to play through as well uh, that for me it's a very important factor to be honest um, so yeah, apart from all of the, you know, the gripes I have with it, it's one of the games I have played the most, which means it is fun. It is uh, uh, an enjoyable game. I just wish it was more than it is. But that's, yeah, that's something I, I, I can't, you know, criticize a game for what it's not, for what it isn't. I can only say about what it is. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's just... I like it more complex, and this really isn't that much, that complex at all. Um, kind of can be a bit repetitive, and that's my main gripe with it. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully Tuscany will change uh, my my opinion on uh, on it, uh, and will you know um, place uh, make it from a good game and make it a superb uh, game. But right now, for me. Yeah, it's, it's a good game. I will definitely keep it. I will definitely keep on playing it a lot because, yeah, it's uh, super fast to play and I like when it's super fast to play. Uh, it's really, 
it's not a zen uh, gaming experience but it's really a calm experience i mean you can even go get yourself a glass of wine and just play it like that because <laughs> it's really uh, yeah it's a non-stressful um gaming experience yeah that's video culture i'm going to share up right now because this is going this is, this is taking quite a bit so yeah this has been Viticulture Essential Edition. I hope you have enjoyed the playthrough and I hope you have enjoyed this video as well. If you have endured it up to this point, uh, kudos to you because this is dragging along. But I really wanted to um, leave it well stated what are my main gripes with the game, okay? Because I know it's a loved game and if I'm just here talking crap about it, people are going to get mad. So I really want to get my point across why, I mean, it's not... In the top ranks for me uh, but yeah I'm Ed I think uh, I'm done for today <laughs> uh, thank you so much uh, so much for watching um, again if you love viticulture stay tuned because we will have a playthrough for Tuscany I can't promise you when because I, uh, it hasn't arrived yet uh, I don't really have it yet when I do you will see an unboxing on the channel and when you see an unboxing you know there's a playthrough incoming as well so yeah I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye. Have a good one.